I'm Dr. Jeff Marlyov. I'm the VP Marine Science at the Vancouver Aquarium. I conduct fish research here. Lingcod are a top predator in our local waters, and we've spent over a century overfishing them. They are now very depleted, especially in the inland seas, so it's important that people try to keep track of them. In areas where lingcod have been depleted, if the word gets out to the diving community that there really aren't any big lingcod, say in Howe Sound, well, that's kind of like Disneyland without Mickey. This lingcod egg mass survey started when we expected White Cliff Marine Protected Area to result in rapid recovery of seriously depleted lingcod. The surprise has been that lingcod really are not recovering very fast. People might expect that there are universities or government agencies conducting this kind of important survey, but actually it's the citizens, the divers who volunteer to do this, that have the only long-running, and this is over 16 years now, long-running survey of this important ground fish species in the entire Strait of Georgia. And of course, we cover all of British Columbia with the survey. During the late fall, females enter shallower water where males are starting to protect specific territories. And then a, an area where you have a number of males competing to protect their t territories becomes a site where the females choose the best looking boys and they court, an egg mass is laid and actually there are these little lingcod, little beat up black lingcod that are sneaky males that rush in and get their bit of fertilization in. So it's quite a stud fest. When a diver is down underwater in the Pacific Northwest in February, if you can just pay attention to whether you're noticing male lingcod guarding egg masses, and it's really e easy because the eggs look like a chunk of styrofoam. They really stick out and the males tend to be aggressive. All we ask is that you make a note on your slate of the depth, whether the egg mass was being guarded, and imagine, is it more the size of a grapefruit or a cantaloupe or a watermelon? That's important because it gives us the age of the female that laid the eggs. It's pretty important that people review the few things we ask for if they're planning to do a lingcod egg mass survey dive. And then also remember that you can easily enter the results on the aquarium's website at vanaqua.org. The survey typically centers on the latter part of February. In each year, we change the specific dates a bit so that it, it brackets weekends. but. Uh, you can usually find a dive shop or a charter operator who will help you to review how to do the survey and help you get your results in. If you go to the aquarium's web, you can get the report and see how everything worked out. And we make comments about where lingcod are showing signs of improvement. Uh, unfortunately, we have not seen a full recovery of lingcod in any of the inland seas. But whenever there is an increase in the average age of the females, it tends to correlate with a particular program of focused enforcement. The enforcement is a big part of it. And so the divers don't just help in performing this important survey. Divers are out there watching, fishing. And if you see a poacher, observe record, report. One of the things we've noticed is that if a diver would like to do a link on egg mass survey, you really should ask around if you're not familiar with the area because if you wind up on flat sand bottom for the whole dive, well, we would have predicted you weren't going to see egg masses there. So uh, we have some explicit instructions now. If you were in a good rocky area and had link eggs and it was only 15 minutes out of a total hour dive, that's the kind of information that we really need to have come across to us so that we know how to use your data because the results are important as long as you are diving where lingcod should be. After we had years of success with our lingcod survey, we decided, well, rockfish are so seriously depleted in many areas, divers could really help doing a rockfish survey. And I have to confess, We've had problems with this survey because it's a little more intimidating to divers. There are various species of rockfish, and 
in our own research dives, we actually count the rockfish, and that's not easy to do. You really have to focus. So there are a few issues we're trying to work out. It's really only in the last 15, 20 years that we've come to realize that rockfish are extremely long-lived. A lot of our common species live for over a century. That means that when they've become depleted, we don't have the right to expect them to recover quickly because their life history is based on them striking it lucky maybe just two, three times in a century. So they really need to be protected for long periods. People tend not to understand that. Rockfish of the various inshore rocky reef species actually will spend their whole long life, a half a century, a century, on one rock pile. It's hard for people to believe if they go fishing on the same rock pile every week or maybe every summer that, hey, what happened to the rockfish? Well, you can fish them out easily. It makes it very important that we somehow gain information on where the rockfish still exist and whether they are persisting in areas set aside to protect them. Rockfish, of course, are much more abundant than their major predator, the lingcod, so it's tricky. We can't ask sport divers to keep a precise count. It's very hard to do with rockfish, and there are a lot of tricky rules you have to apply to discipline yourself according to the visibility through which you're detecting the rockfish. But uh, we have a simple rule. If it's n no bigger than your hand, then you can call it a juvenile. If it's bigger than your hand, call it an adult. Uh, first, though, you have to measure your hand against a 20 centimeter ruler because the literature accepts 20 centimeters as adult size. And with very little practice, you can get so that you are pretty accurate, especially if you mark 20 centimeters on your slate. If you see a rockfish, or a lingcod, but rockfish in particular, because it's easy to, to get a 20 centimeter measure, landmark the fish. That is, see what its tail is right next to and what its nose is right next to. Then ignore the rockfish, it's going to move, and go up to that limpet and that kelp hold fast and put your slate against those two objects and you have gotten a landmarked measure that's very accurate and you can tell whether that fish was bigger than 20 centimeters or, or under. And then you can just remember that you saw an adult or a juvenile. You don't have to do that too many times during a dive before you're just seeing which ones are adults and which ones are juveniles. And after the dive, make your best guess as to how many you saw to say a few or many doesn't really help us, but be brave, accept that you might make an error, but say, I think I saw 15. I'm sure that it was at least 35. Put down a number, guess at it, and we'll accept experimental error. We don't want you to say, I saw a few, or I saw very many. We need for you to try to remember how many, and it's a discipline that gets to be fun, because uh, if you're doing it with a buddy, make it a competition. Now, people want to have fun sport diving, so you may want to go down and see some cloud sponges. You may be doing various different purposes to your dive, but then if you come to a rocky headland and you realize, whoa, there's a whole school of quillbacks right here, then they're all big adults. Well, note the time in your dive, make a count, make a note of the depth and the substrate, and then when you've finished doing your count and you get into a different area, put down the the end time. So if you were only counting for 10 minutes, we can do a calculation and just give us some general notes on whether there were absolutely no rockfish anywhere else or whether uh, they were a bit less abundant elsewhere, but we saw rockfish for, say, half the dive and give us an estimate. We'll try and work with it. If you go to vanacqua.org, to the aquarium's website, you can find our rockfish survey and then you can, in the instructions, find a link to play the rockfish game. And it's a nice little moving picture game where you can see what the identifying characteristics are for different species. Once someone tells you, it's pretty easy. Copper and quillback rockfish are both dark rockfish, but hey, the whole back end of the quillback, fins and all, is completely dark. Copper rockfish are called white bellies in the US because that's the only rockfish that has white on the belly. Once you realize that, hey, it's easy. If you get so that you enjoy doing rockfish surveys whenever the visibility and the habitat is, is suitable for you to do that, and if you get involved in the aquarium's program, 
then you start appreciating more about your dives. It's really fun when you start to know which species of rockfish you're seeing. And it's very important because there are certain areas where there are periods of time where a particular species of rockfish becomes very rare. We need to have in more information on that and the sport divers are the ones who are down there seeing it. It's just that if you aren't paying attention to it and not reporting it, then nobody knows. There are now 164 rockfish conservation areas throughout British Columbia. Around Vancouver, there is no fishing allowed for rockfish or lingcod at anywhere at any time of year. The government's taking this seriously. We really need to appreciate the fact that nobody knew that they were being depleted over an entire century. Now they are depleted. We're very anxious to see whether they can recover. I think there's some good news. We are seeing signs of recovery. No one should ever be shy about trying to ask an expert for help. REEF is a survey group that helps people with identifications. It's not easy to go to an expert and say, I saw a brown fish, what was it? So if you're a photographer, the power of photography is tremendous and people are now documenting new range extensions for rockfish species. Ask your dive operator, get flipping through books and, and work on learning how to identify these species because you may actually be seeing, uh, for example, China rockfish near Vancouver. Only recently have we seen any verified examples. It does happen.